within the field of science and astronomy, what topics have you changed your opinion or mind about? Yeah, um, I, I, there's a bunch. I mean, I think it's always really important to just keep an open mind and to be ready to receive new evidence to then allow you to be, you know, to change your mind. Like you, what you want is you want your, your beliefs to reflect the, the most accurate messages that nature is telling you and the, the, that the universe is telling you. Right. And so you want to be able to change your mind and be very flexible about that. And so one that's big for me is that when I first started getting into this job, I was very much about human space exploration and that we were going to live on Mars. And there was a lot of really influential books at the time that I read that said, oh, you know, humans are going to build a city on Mars and it's going to be amazing. And then the more work that I've done being an actual journalist and reporting on the difficulties, the more I've, I've turned away from that being a thing that I think is feasible or even preferable that, that in fact, um, that earth is so great that we have trees and we have oceans and we have, we have, um, animals and we have just all of this stuff that's provided to us just by default, by living on this planet. If we go to Mars, we're going to have dust and mountains and rocks and radiation, and we're going to have to recreate as much of planet earth as we can. And that no matter what we do, it will always be a pale shadow of, of planet Earth. And so mm. I think science fiction tells us, oh, it's going to be this amazing, cool adventure. Um, but actually, I think after a little while, it wouldn't take very long. You'd be like, oh, this sucks, right? I keep this dust everywhere. I, I, I really would like to just go for a swim in a lake. But I can't do that here because they just don't exist. And so I think my enthusiasm for human space exploration has significantly declined or um, like I'm for exploration, but not colonization, not living on other worlds. I just think that earth is the best place in the universe for us. And so, uh, anything that we try to do, we'll, we'll be trying to kind of recapture the magic of this planet that we happen to grow up on. The other thing, and this is, you know, a lot more controversial is I am, I personally, and this is my opinion, am uh, fairly skeptical of the existence of aliens. I sort of believe Ooh. that we are. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, that, you know, I, it's my opinion that we're possibly the only intelligent civilization and maybe even the only life in the entire um, observable universe. And I'm happy to unpack that, but, it, you know, my argument takes a little while to get there. Actually, We'll unpack that in a sec. I actually want to go back to what you said first about space exploration. Do you think, because everyone always asks, like, how close are we to that point? And no one really has, like, a certain number. Like, in your estimation, how close do you, are, do you think we are to actually colonizing a planet? By that, I mean, I guess, the earliest stages of it, actually getting there and having people be able to live there for more than a year, say. I would say we're about 100 years away. Yeah, like, I think, I think... If, if we want to have a research base on the moon or Mars where we're going to be sending all of the resources that they require to live at a cost of hundreds of billions of dollars per person, then we could do that tomorrow, right? We could do that, I would say, or we could do that in 10 years. We could probably get to a place technologically where we could sustain a outpost on Mars with our current level of technology if the funding willingness was there, which it is absolutely not. Um, and, but that is a different story from, from it being a self-sustaining place, a colony, right? And a, a, a place where you live. And so it's one thing to be, and I always sort of describe this as like being on the death zone, the, in the death zone on Everest, that once you cross a certain altitude on, on Everest, your body is breaking down. The only way you survive is by is by people bringing you goods to get you up to that point. And you have to come back down. You have to get out of that that altitude. And Mars will probably be the same thing. That the only way that you can survive on Mars is with regular deliveries of all of the food and all of the water and all the supplies that you require. Maybe you can make a little bit of it off the land, 
in the way that people in, in Antarctica can pull in some snow, melt it with their fuel to make water to boil their tea. You know, you're living a little bit off the land, but you're not self-sustainable. You know, Antarctica is not a sustainable place. It only exists because the world's nations are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to keep that place going. And that's sort of my perspective. So we will eventually build the infrastructure and the technology to make a place like Mars self-sustaining and livable. I think it's just going to take a lot longer than people are hoping to hear. They want to hear that it's going to happen in 20 years. They, they want it to happen in their lifetime. They want, to, they want to have the option and the choice to go to Mars and thrive there. And, and that is going to happen beyond our lifetime. Yeah, because I guess the other point with that is there's not exactly a catalyst for us to actually go to Mars to to fully yeah there's no reason it. to go like beyond it would be cool is no financial reason no uh you know there's no economy that makes any kind of sense to go anywhere off planet earth apart from launching satellites to orbit planet earth every other possible financial reason that's ever been proposed falls flat and won't cover the costs um, you know, there could be bars of gold sitting on the surface of Mars and it would be too expensive to go pick them up. 